Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn, ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn, tell people to stay off the lawn, compare it to your neighbor's lawn, and complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance, which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. Gee, I won't tell it. Megan would kill me. Metal Faithful, it is I, your host, the Mandated Reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radledge, and this is the Metal Hammer of Doom, brought to you on Making Fuck Wednesday, now known as Butt Swab Wednesday. If you want to get your butt swabbed, Wednesday is the day to do it. I think I got a coupon for that. <laughs> I got a coupon for butt swabs. <laughs> <laughs> that, of course, that, that voice you hear... Is the one and only Jesse Stark, you're the disapproving dad. How do you do, sir? Uh, I am doing great. You got you want a real quick story, interesting child story? I know we have. We were going to talk children tonight, but that was when we decided not to review Moonwalker by uh, Sega Genesis. <laughs> you know what's but, hilarious? Uh, that game, like when you free the kids, they go, Michael, and run away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hang on. We, we, so before Aesop tells you one of his fables, back from... The Dead, <clears throat> it's the Prodigal Son. We're reviewing his favorite band tonight, Amon, Amoth, Berserker, hence it's make, hence why it's making Fuck Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, the Metal Coop, Robert Cooper, how do you do, sir? Well, I stuck a whole fucking wire in my leg and cauterized a vein. So he's, he's more machine now than he is man. I am. I told them to fire the lasers. Even I did the fingers and everything, and they all laughed. I'm like, come on, man. You've been doing this for years, I bet you. Jesse. But at least we, at least we got to talk some music. He's just like, I like Alice in Chains. I'm like, fag. Mm. Oh, I hate <laughs> you both. Why do you like, do you hate, do you just like Alice in Chains, Jesse? I love, I love Alice in Chains. One of my favorite bands. I'm not, and uh, I'm not kidding. I love him. No we excuses. Had a, if, if, if have that, I if, known? If that podcast were, you know, still alive. Uh, and not shot down by the FCC or whatever the hell it was that uh, <laughs> you told me that DMC FCC like, won't let you be and let you, me be me, so let me see because they tried to shut me down on MTV. I want but to it say is. it was DC DMA. It was like DC DMA or something like that. Yeah. We got a cease yeah. and desist to take the show down. So yeah. you got, oh, you got DCMA. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I got. We got DCMA it's twice. Copyright Millennium Act is what that is. What? Yep. I think our strategy after that was not to post things on Twitter because yep. that seemed to be where uh, we got a lot of got a, a lot of heat from. But anyway, I I talked that album up. I really don't think that they had much of a they shouldn't have had any problem with my review of it. It was you probably going, oh, "This is horse shit" or something along those lines uh, yeah, during fuck, the podcast. Yeah, fuck Allison Chains. How about that? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Lawyer sitting in university papers. That's you know what I actually really like their comeback stuff. Like I oh, like see, I like I up. like dirt. I you know, I like that album and then after that the rest of it's just yeah. The rest of it's has, mud. Get it? Has he actually been with the band longer than Lane Staley was? 
Uh, it's got to be approaching it because we had a long time in between albums there at one point. Uh, so it's it's got to be close. Jesse, is this a, is this? Are you going to tell the story about how your kid licked all like the 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 um <laughs> the, the, cheese. the goldfish? <laughs> no, I wasn't going to tell that story. Um, I'd have murdered my child if he did that. By the way, <laughs> it's just all I heard was rattle, 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 rattle. And I'm like, get the fucking goldfish and go on. I mean, come on, Colton. And then you turn around and I'm like, I see him. Bring his hand up. He has no goldfish in his hand whatsoever. But he then begins licking the cheese off of his hands. He's done it like at least ten times before that. And I'm like, oh. And then Kira, Kira has no clue. Kira gets this big old bowl, eats him, and I say, Kira, you might not want to eat any more of this. <laughs> Wait, so did he just, like, lick his hands as – he just licking the cheese dust off He's, his fingers? Yes, he would, he, would lick his, he would lick his hands – Lick the cheese off his hand, stick his stick his hand back down in the big goldfish box, rattle the goldfish around to get more cheese on his hand, and then bring it up and lick the cheese off his hand again, over and over and over. Oh, you should have harmed Robbie's code, that little bu- that little bum. I had I had no idea what was going him, on. You should have made him eat way too much. You should have been like you know when you catch your kid smoking or something. Just fucking make him a big old bowl of cheese dust. Of cheese Here, son. Dust. Here's a straw. Go to town. Yeah. Start eating. Yeah. Tori's like, Dad, I'm tired. Straight up cinnamon challenge him with fucking Cheeto dust. <laughs> uh, all right. So here, here's the actual story I came, came I to. I literally so. had to just go like half throw up in the bathroom. Oh. Did you pause it? <laughs> no. Oh, we're live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're live. I literally threw down my. I was like, and then uh, he's like, threw down my headphones and ran into the bathroom. Oh, oh boy. That's well. like my love life. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mark. Okay, Mark has a weak stomach. Was it the cheese or is it the chemo? Which one is it? Could you shut up? How about that? <laughs> All right. He's so he, he, that he didn't get to do that. Uh, he, here's the real story. Here's the real I'm story. about to cancel this podcast. You need, to, you need to change topics. <laughs> here's the story. Really? <laughs> He's oh. got a weak stomach, dude. It has been. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's yeah. So. Colton wakes up a couple uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before it was yesterday um, and we had some company come over uh, they drove for a good while and they got here real late at night so they came in and they got their beds all set up while the kids were sleeping now um, Lowell who actually listens to the Rattletch and Broadcasting Network I don't know if he listens to uh, the Metal Hammer of Doom but he you know he's talked about listening to Damn You Hollywood a couple times and we actually carried on a couple conversations here uh, anyway, he is a African American gentleman, and Colton wakes up and sees Lowell. Like I don't know if he's in the living room or in the kitchen, and he walks back and he's asking. He, I don't know who he asked this, but he apparently asked either Mindy or he asked Kira, "Why is Snoop Dogg in our house?" <laughs> <laughs> Which really, really confuses me, number one, because we don't watch anything with Snoop Dogg in it. The only thing I could think of that Colt's ever seen Snoop Dogg in is uh, on YouTube or something like that. Mm-hmm. And number two, Lowell looks nothing like Snoop Dogg. Not at all. But for the next, I don't know, three or four hours or the rest of the day, uh, Snoop Dogg came up quite a bit. And, of course, Lowell's a great guy. He, uh, he Him and Chrissy both just kept... <laughs> And they wouldn't let Lowell live it down either. Kept calling him Snoop Dogg, and I was just like, oh, geez. So anyway, there you go. That's a five-year-old for you. That's okay. the life with the five-year-old. So so your five-year-old is mildly racist. Let me tell you about my mildly racist eight-year-old. Oh, great. <laughs> so I'm watching the UFC on Saturday. It's the John oh, Jones. No. It's, it's the John Jones, Tiago Santos pay-per-view, okay? Um, this is one of the prelims on ESPN. It's Song Yadong. Oh, yeah. Some, eh. some Mexican dude, right? Song Yadong hits him with one punch. Fucking kills the guy. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> it was like, it was like, honestly, I don't think he would have reacted nearly as violently had he been shot with a gun in the face. Ooh. Yeah, Song Yadong fucking murdered this guy. Um, later in the night, Jorge Masvidal would fucking murder Ben Askren, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, so anyway. that was 
Nice. Ben Askren's a douchebag. Yeah, he is. So anyway, back to song get on. So I'm I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, you know, and, and I'm just you know, my, my son's playing the Switch. He's playing Yoshi's Crafted World. My daughter's at the dining room table with her back to the TV, playing with Barbies. She she sees me react like loudly. So she so she turns around, she's like, What are you watching? She sees me watching the fight and she catches the replay of Song Yidong murdering this guy. And she goes, Hey, that guy looks like the Korean zombie. Song Yidong's uh, from China. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it that different from the people I work with being like, damn Mexicans? I'm like, it's from Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> so, children's mild racism is adorable. Uh, Have you ever heard of the Patton Oswalt do his uh, bit on uh, his uh, adorably racist daughter? I can't say I have. Oh, the, okay, real quick, and then we'll get into Amon Amarth. So, um, they're in a, like, a Starbucks or whatever. She's eating a cake pop or something. He's uh, he's drinking a coffee, and they're just hanging out in Starbucks. And this old black dude walks into Starbucks, and she, without missing a beat, starts to point at him. And in her mind, he looks like Rafiki. Oh no! From the oh, Lion no. King. <laughs> oh no! At which point she starts chanting, "Monkey!" Monkey. Oh my god! <laughs> Yelling monkey at him, dear. And so, Patton Oswalt tells the story about like how what he should have done was explain. Oh, the daughter is referencing the Lion King, and oh, by the way, she's like four or whatever. Yeah, you know, and just doesn't know any better, and nothing was meant by it. And then he, you know, he 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 does it really funny. He's just like he, you know, he's he starts saying all these like quasi liberal things because you know. He's like super progressive, and you know, uh, and he, you know, and obviously she wasn't being really racist, but it comes off that way. So, m- m- but mind you, the entire Starbucks is like filled with people on like Tumblr and Twitter and shit like that. So, um, instead of reacting appropriately, he just p- he just picks her up and goes no 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 and runs out of Starbucks. Uh, yep. <laughs> Google that shit. Yep. Pat and Oswald, adorable racism. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of adorable Bazooka! Speaking of adorable racism, we're talking about uh, Robert Cooper's favorite band tonight, Amon Amarth. They released an album called Berserker. We were going to do this th- a couple of weeks ago. Robert, why couldn't we do? Why couldn't we do this on time? What was the issue? Uh, we had to. We had to record on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday, and then you had to go help Mexicans cross the border. Is that correct? Yes, like Wednesday, I was totally good. I was like, "All right, I had my hot date. We're gonna go." Uh, she's gonna sit in the car and listen to me do a podcast. That's exactly what was gonna happen. <laughs> and then, uh, and then you're like, "Hey, I can't do Wednesday. I got th- I got to do Thursday." And I'm like, uh, "I just looked at my schedule. Can't do that." So, so we we're like, "Well, uh, how much do you care about the other two bands for the next two weeks?" I'm like, "Ah, not enough." So, you should have cared about Glory Hammer. Oh, really I know. I've been have. listening to a lot of Glory Hammer. Don't get me wrong. I've been I've been enjoying that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're a lot. They're really fun. So Berserker is the eleventh. Stu- so that's why we're doing it three weeks later. Berserker is the eleventh studio album by Swedish Jesse. A key is from Sweden. You like you meatballs? Like meatballs. Um, I love completing instructions on how to put up furniture for myself. <laughs> Uh, death metal band Amon Amarth. It was released on May 3rd through Metal Blade Records. The album was produced by Jay Rustin and marks the first album to, uh, by the band to feature drummer Jacques Walgren, who joined the band in 2016. Uh, according to Exclaim, the album is an 8 out of 10, describing it as the sound that, that emphasized strong, triumphant riffage and bombastic songwriting, which I would agree with. And say that the album features some of their strongest material since Twilight of the Thunder God. Oh my. So, we'll see, uh, we'll put that to the test tonight. Uh, Jesse, I think, uh, we reviewed Dom's Viking, uh, in 2016, if I recall, is that correct? March 25th, 2016 is when Yom's Viking was released, and we did, yep, I can't give you a uh, definite date on that one. I remember that podcast. That was the one where we didn't talk about the album at all. We talked about how depressed I was with my love life. (laughs) (laughs) 
and like, but that wasn't like, the one. But that wasn't the one where we where we didn't talk about the album, but instead talked about my farting and then got commented about it on YouTube. <laughs> Wait, what album? Well, I was not a part of that one, was I? Uh, <laughs> I think you were. I think, I think you, you might were. have been. That was of one course. of the many dumpster fire podcasts that we've done on this show. Um, God, what, what what one was that? Because that was one where people were like really into the album. It was one of the best albums of the year, and we just fucking like who cares? One dude, yeah. Well, one like, dude. Let me tell you about my slinker. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about my butt swab. All right. Um, oh. Yeah, that, that guy's probably listening to this day. And goes, Why did they fucking listen to that, Mark? Butt swab, butt swab, butt swab. I mean, I can't wait for them to tour with floppy esophagus. <laughs> oh, please. So um, the, one of the sergeants I work with has been texting me every day um, while I'm in the hospital, and he's been sending me, like, heavy metal um, videos, trying to keep up my spirits. And uh, he was talking to me about, like, one really ba- weird band name. And so the last thing I texted him was, I have a friend who thinks that John Cougar Concentration Camp is the best band name ever. <laughs> Haven't heard back from him. <laughs> um. Yay, I've ruined I've ruined your interpersonal relationships with my shenanigans. And if you're playing the Rattle Engine Broadcasting bingo game, that you can mark off that square. There you go. <laughs> we, John we, Cougar Concentration Camp. Yeah, we mentioned we mentioned John Cougar Concentration Camp. You can mark that on the bingo card. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Nick, my friend who I need to get on this podcast, is the one that... Uh, that you can mark another me. space on the bingo card. <laughs> that is just his name from here on out. Like That, that has That's become part of that. his name. He, he's like the Vera from Cheers on this podcast. Always mentioned, never seen. Never All right. See him. Before we it lose... almost got him one time, and then he was like, nah. That was for that Pantera podcast. And he was like, oh, never mind. He's like, if you ever do Black Sabbath, I'm like, well, Mark doesn't like Black Sabbath, so it's never going to happen. <laughs> I, I didn't like that Black Sabbath album. I like old Black Sabbath just fine. All right. So let's get into this album here. Um, we're going to get uh, started with this party. This is Fafner's Gold. to wait I had to give it a little that, that, just that little bit because as they, they approach the second verse that little bit they do with the drums and the guitars there is just amazing Fafner's gold what a gallop on that right Rob 
much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh it was actually interesting. Came to the beginning of it, I get almost uh it has a Nightwish vibe for me. Really? Really? Okay, obviously you're not talking about the vocals. No, 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 no. The uh the the be- right at the beginning, you know, kind yeah. of the, just the open guitar riff, nice and soft. Mm-hmm. Like I just get like it gives me like kind of a Nightwish vibe. I mean, it doesn't stay there, of course, but I was like, huh. I was just kind of thinking like this. Just reminds me of Nightwish. What'd you think, Jesse? Who's Fafner, by the way? You're my researcher. Ooh, I would say that for some reason I'm the guy with the gold. Yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking it's a dragon, Fafner. Uh, Pretty short. Let's take a look. We'll find out. Yes, yeah, so you're and... going to read from Wikipedia, guy. Yeah, I'm I know. Uh, this... Looking for Muslim gold. <laughs> I was uh, I was walking around the facility to this on my first day here. I was doing. Were you uh, searching Fafner's gold? I was looking for Fafner's going around Moffat Cancer Center. By the way, so it's so funny. Fafner. Uh, Fafner. Okay, go ahead. Oh, real quick. In Norse mythology, Fafner uh, is a son of the dwarf king Haramdir and brother Rain, uh, o- <laughs> Oter, Longenhor, and Lofnir. Oh wait! If you uh, think this is good, you go check out the Glory Hammer show and wait, let Jesse tell you a tale. Oh, that was some fun stuff. I, I'm chuckling because when you said Fafner, I'm like, ah, it's probably a shitty anime. And then, this well, is what's funny is Fafner. that I had yep. to, I had to add to the Google search in order to avoid those <laughs> results because that was all that came up initially was Fafner anime. All right, so Fafner X. So Fafner's the son of a dwarf king. Got it. Uh, yeah, well, after being affected by the curse of Avin, or excuse me, and Vari's ring and gold, which is mentioned in the song. <laughs> Wait, the curse of Aventasia? <laughs> the curse of Davari <laughs> from WWE. Um, Fafner oh, became... A... That's racist. <laughs> Fafner became a dragon and was slain by Sigurd. Okay, so this dwar- the son of a dwarf king morphed into a dragon and then was killed. After a curse, yep, that's correct. Was okay. Was the day man? Did he what? I didn't. How did he kill him? Did he kill him? Did he like? Did he? Did, was it like Sleeping Beauty where he threw an enchanted sword at him that was enchanted not, by like pixie, I, you know, pixies and shit? I don't know, Mark. I know. Okay, it says Graham stung him well. The dragon fell. Reagan. That's not Rain. It's Reagan. Reagan said, "Fry its heart." Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Reagan, Reagan, <laughs> Reagan yeah, smash. Well, no, Nancy, I, yeah, I, dad. <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if Ronald Reagan killed the dragon with with Nancy Reagan? He, he like he just like, threw her like a spear. He's <laughs> like, yep, it's gonna it's gonna be morning morning time in Sweden again. <laughs> he, he throws the sword right through the dragon scale, and you know the the classic the classic line is just say no. Well, what if, that's, uh, that's what Nancy was saying what, as she hit the dragon. What if, what if it wasn't real Ronald Reagan and it was the Ronald Reagan from the Atlanta Confusion video by Genesis? Oh my! Oh, the well, puppet, deep the, cut, the hor- oh. horrible, horrifying puppet. Ooh, that's like sweating gallons of water at one point. Oh. I'll never forget that video. It is horrifying. Uh, All right, but is it as good as the Disturbed version with that fucking Todd McFarlane one? No, I have not seen the Disturbed version. I know oh, really? Song. I've heard the song, but I haven't seen the video. It's actually kind of neat, but it totally reminds me of, like, Spawn. Does it? Okay. Right. It was so, in the new Mortal Kombat game. So That's what I heard. So we're all okay with this. So I, we we got to speed this up a little bit. Oh, Mark, come on. It's only <laughs> yeah. an hour and 15 minutes until they got to take your vitals again. Uh, they're probably at the door listening right now. Just <laughs> they to got, sure they got cups getting... against the door and shit. They're just like, we get, <laughs> look, we're going to get them. We're going to, like, just tackle them in the room. Give us those vitals, <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> I like the first song. It's classic Amon Amarth. And, uh, you know, I really liked uh, Yom's Viking. I really dug that. It was a concept album. And right. I think that also spoke to me. So, you know, I, I think this is a very solid opener. All right. Um, so this next one was a single that they released on April 17th. It's a good one. This is uh, also one of the ones they made a video for. It was actually part of a, like a two-part video thing. Uh, we did the one for Raven's Flight, but this one is Crack the Sky. <laughs>
All right, Thor, let your hammer fly. Crack the sky. Oh, my butt swab. No, <laughs> not how it goes, Mark. Oh. Not how it goes. That is a kick-ass song. I think I, that might be my favorite off this album. Somebody listened to this and was like, wow, a nurse touched his butt. He won't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Drive that shit right into the ground. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me do it, let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. Oh, there it is. Oh, that horse done got butt swabbed. That that horse definitely got butt swabbed. Mm, butt scratcher. So real quick, um, the very first day I was here, they had to do a butt swab, and then and then they had, they told me they were gonna do another one on Wednesday. The, the butt swab Wednesday. Um, so I'm sitting here with my wife. I just got in here. You know, it's the you know I haven't even gotten the car T yet. We're just you know the very first the first day was kind of like frenetic and frantic. I'll talk a little bit more about this on the next cancer update, but I want to get to the, the part that reminded me of Butt Scratcher. Um, so the nurse is just like, okay, we're going to do a swab of your nose, make sure you don't have any viruses. And then we're also going to do a swab of your butt to make sure you don't have MRSA. And so I blurt oh, out. Oh, no. And so I blurt out, Butt Scratcher! <laughs> 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 uh. And my wife has to, like, dive in front of me to explain to the nurse that... I'm referencing Family Guy, <laughs> and that she should not think I've already gone into neurotoxicity even before I got uh, the yeah. RC. You might want to cut back on the obscure <laughs> references, okay? That's going to figure into your chart. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, when the nurse practitioner walks in, she's like, okay, I have some neurocognitive questions for you. I'm just going to start yelling butt scratcher at her. <laughs> oh, they might negative. not let me go home Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Too many Family Guy references. Uh, is this normal for him? What's today's date, butt scratcher? Um... Later on, I think you know. I, I told my wife how much I appreciated her and standing by me through all this, and you know, coming with me to the hospital and everything, not just like dropping me off at the front door like a fucking orphan, you know, in a basket. <laughs> take, please take care of my baby and like running away. Um, and so, and so instead of saying you know I love you too or I love you back or anything like that, she just looks at me and she goes butt scratcher, butt scratcher, butt scratcher. That is true love. That is, that is true love right there. True butt scratcher. All right, um, crack the sky. So Hardly I don't like. <laughs> I don't like that one as much as I like Raven's Flight. Um, it's okay. It's it's fine. It's kind of uh, a middle end song for me. What do you guys think? Mm, I disagree. I really, really, really enjoy this one. Coop. I don't like it as much as the uh, Mastodon album "Crack the Sky." That's a mm. fantastic. Which one. is constantly what I was thinking of every time they said it. <laughs> uh, I, but uh, you know, I got past it. I'm, that was like the last Mastodon album I really got into. I haven't gotten but, uh, I haven't gotten into a Mastodon album since Blood and whatever the one that had Blood and Thunder on it. Uh, probably yeah, that's the one with the whale. Fuck, Blood Mountain was really good. But uh, I, don't know. I, 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 I feel like everything good. that came after that album got a little too like esoteric and artsy for me. I do feel like they're fairly pretentious. Yeah, that comes to me. It was fairly pretentious. <laughs> yes, Mastodon got very pretentious. Um, I saw them live, and I was not thrilled with their set. Anyway, back to Amon and Marth. Well, so, I mean, just like when I went, when somebody invited me to see All That Remains, and I went, Ugh, they played two songs from the first three album. Never mind. It was the only good <laughs> good album. But yeah, this song is uh, this song's good. It's good. It didn't really blow me away or anything, but I felt like it was a, it's just a good Amon and Marth song. Like, yeah. All right. This next one should be familiar for all of our Marvel fans. This is Mjolnir, Hammer of Thor.
That's Mjolnir, Hammer of Thor. What I love about Amon Amarth is how rhythmic they are. Like, if, if it wasn't for the growling vocals, I would... I, I, and and to the, in, in my definition, I wouldn't even call them death metal. That's like the only death metal thing about them is the growly vocals. But even yeah. growly vocals are cleaner than, I think, like true... When I think of death metal, like true death metal. You know, like Cannibal Corpse, Six Feet Under, um, Deicide. You know what I mean, Robert? Like when you think, yeah, you think of like a more well, like, like like death metal vocals tend to be more guttural. Like he's this is clean with a growl, and they're so rhythmic. Like there's elements of punk in here if if you dig down deep into like the bass rhythm and everything, and they're just amazing. Like the, like their song compositions are some of my favorites. Oh, well, I would. Uh, I mean, I would say their music is quintessential melodic death metal. Really, I mean that. So when you say yes. melodic death metal, you're you're saying pretty much everything I just said about their music and somebody's growling on vocals. Well, no, I mean like their style is very much that Gothenburg, Sweden, like melodic death metal sound that you find that was really I feel popularized by At the Gate in like in, the early nineties. I was gonna say like in flames twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean same actually same area. There's a there's a few songs that I'm like, hey, this reminds me of In Flames, and they didn't blow donkey cock. <laughs> Boy, did In Flames fall off the fucking just pedestal. Ugh. Yeah, they were, oh man, like, I, I really dug them for the longest time, and they still get a, occasionally, like, Dude, you like, know, a few songs that I'm like, I could dig it. Like, Horacle? Jesse, have you heard Horacle? No, I have not. You you need to hear Horacle, and I think the one before that, I can't remember the name uh, of the title. The is. Race good lunar strains really good whatever the one with the the, the pink cover is um our uh, i want to say like it like i said it was the one that immediately proceeds to horacle but yeah like horacle i think like was like their pinnacle um i, I like personally but which one the jester race that might be the one i'm thinking of by the way uh, that's, I'd have to... well that's the one with the big ass like mountain on wheels or something yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to look at their covers again. Hold on, I, I send it. But um, yeah, Jesse, you gotta check out like the early In Flame stuff if you like. If you're digging on Amon Amar, like just go right to episode six six six. It's fucking balls. Okay. Oh, well, and you gotta check out at the gates. At oh, the gates. I, I never told you guys that uh, that uh, that the really awesome fucking tour that they're gonna have is not coming near either of you. Like, at all. Yeah, it's like starting in North Carolina. I, I got a note from one of my friends today that I had to get over my cancer and get recovered by November so I could see it at Madison Square Garden. Well, are they coming Are they coming by you uh, there, Coop? They're starting in North oh. Carolina. Yeah, they? they're, starting in, they're starting in Charlotte. It's like, it's going to be lit. It's them uh, at, the, it's at the gates, Amon Amar. All right, slow uh, down. First of all, you're doing this way out of order. It's Slayer. Vegas. No, no, start, start again. It's Slayer. <laughs> Primus, no, that's Ministry, and Phil Ensemble and the Appliances doing Vulgar Display of Power. No, that's not the one I'm thinking of. They got oh, that's what I thought you were referencing. That's what I was talking about. No, there's one in, no, there's one in uh, October that's Amon and Amar, uh, Arch Enemy, At the Gates, and Grand Magus all together. Oh, see, I Grand, feel like that is Grand coming Magus to Florida. But I, thought, I thought I got a note saying that there was a Grand Magus show coming to Florida, but, like, you know, I'm not going to be able to get to it. Um, anyway... Mjolnir, Hammer of Thor. What do you think, Jesse? Hey, uh, we are still going strong here. Third track, and I, I'm not getting bored with it, uh, which is fine. That, that's if Amon Amar started boring me at the third track, we would have problems. So, so far, a solid album. Uh, you know, decent. I, I enjoyed that song too. Uh, as in, like, I can't really get into the song structure structure too much uh, because you guys covered it pretty well, but. You know, hey, it's 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 another it's another song about a hammer, uh, and we've done <laughs> quite a few of those here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Yes, dick jokes yeah, and hammer songs. Who we trust? 
<laughs> I don't know what a hoot is. All right. Um, I I mean that's it's one of my, I was gonna send that to one of my best friends. That's his last name, and I'm sure he'd be like, "Aha! Told you, go." Your your, your <laughs> friend is a hootsman. Fantastic. A hootsman. Yep. All right. Let's move this along. Uh, this next one is called Shield Wall. Vikings raise the shield wall, fight to death. This is, what do you guys call it? Where they divide them, the wall of death. I can see this. <laughs> this is happening right now when this song is being played. Actually, it reminded me of like an episode of Game of Thrones. Oh, what's uh, what's that? You don't know what the show is? You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't heard you talk about it vociferously. <laughs> I still haven't watched the show though. Uh, it's, a, it's all right. I got just so I got really tired of hearing about it, and then when the ending was bad, I was like, "Okay, uh-huh. that's nice." Fuck it. Uh-huh. The ending was fine. Fuck those people. <laughs> Fuck them right in their ear. In the ear hole. Right in the Fuck ear hole. Fuck them in their butthole. <laughs> Fuck them in the butthole. Get the butt swab on Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, boy, do we beat horses to death here. Wednesday, butt swab. <laughs> There's some stool there. Time to wipe. <laughs> I've got blood in my stool. No, um, anyway. <laughs> At the bloody butthole. <laughs> see a doctor. Oh, that's not good. I did not expect Shield Wall to turn into this. <laughs> Nobody that did. Was, no one, yeah. Somebody... Somebody should have warned me. Someone, we're going to get a comment on YouTube. I did not tune in to hear about your butt, sir. <laughs> Too bad. Butt scratcher. All right, anything butt else? Scratcher. Butt scratcher. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Besides butt scratcher, what did you think of this one there, uh, Coopster? I really enjoyed this play. This is fucking banger best song in the album in my opinion Ooh, it is a strong I would not, it's, strong, it's strong but I wouldn't call it the best song no it's a well, strong I mean I feel like this album kind of it lacks in some parts and like there are certain parts of this album like like Hack the Sky and I was like you know what this one's uh, the song exists Ooh. I don't know I uh, I remember walking around to it listening to it I was driving in the car etc and just thinking to myself like the, like rhythm rhythmically there's a lot of really cool, really fun songs on here. You know, like this one had a good march to it, had a very, had a very doomy march to it. But I, uh, you know, it, there, there are when I when I think like I, I, Amon and Marth, I think what everyone thinks of them is Twilight of the Thunder God, right? Um, that's probably like their peak song. And so it things, is. you know, so if you drew like a circle around that, you know, the songs that kind of enter that circle close to it, but not exactly, are probably their better songs than not. I would say there's quite a few on here that I would put into that circle. This isn't one of them, though. 
Uh, I mean, I don't know. Actually, that's not even one of my favorite songs. But I mean, it is, but I actually really like the Sabaton cover of it, to be honest. Have you heard Rage of Light cover Twilight of the Thunder God? No. Uh, let's check it out. There's this ch- the growling um, chick, uh, olive skin chick, who's just belting out Twilight of the Thunder God on a mountaintop. I mean, we, Jesse and I couldn't do a fucking review of the video because it's literally her on a mountaintop. Like, she might as well have been singing, you know, The Hills Are Alive with the Sound of Music. Mm-mm. <laughs> the hills There's are... the worst fucking videos, I swear. <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of the thunder god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of thunder gods, this next one is called Valkyrie. Here we go. Valkyria. To the old father's gate and tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. <laughs> it's been ten long Alternate days. lyrics. Do you still want me? Oh, Twilight of the Thunder God. All right. Um, I'm just riffing. I'm riffing, Jesse. You are, sir. Uh, get the nurse. You're hallucinating. <laughs> uh, Do you know who's the president? Butt scratcher. Double the butt swab for this man. <laughs> this man needs more butt swabs. <laughs> Wouldn't that suck? If that was. Uh, that was you, know, you know how you do a butt swab, Jesse? Mm-hmm. When you're the one, when you're the one receiving, not giving. I'm, I'm guessing. Do you relax? Uh, I mean, it helps. Smoke a cigarette. You have to. I have to stand against the wall in the like arrest position. <laughs> oh, <that's great. laughs> you, actually, you actually have to stand. You can't just like. Oh, no, no I can't. No, she was like, "Let's do this in the bathroom. Stand against the wall. Like, stick your butt out. Like, like, like bite the curb. <laughs> bite the curb." <laughs> Suddenly, this is American History X. The nurse is very violent. Um, she's like, "Put your hands against the wall. Stick your butt out. Pull your pants down. Like, how far down? Like." You know how far down do we need to go? It's just like enough that I can get to Uranus. Right? I gotta get to Uranus, sir. Maybe so I, like, you know. so my pants halfway down my ass, hands against the wall, butt swab. You need to title this, you know, uh, Amon Amar, <laughs> the butt swab edition. Flash <laughs> Mark's ass facts. <laughs> Folks, if you're getting car T, just know what you're in for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That needs to go on the next cancer update. That is. <laughs> oh, the next cancer update is all butt swabs all the time. 
<laughs> I'm just put. I was gonna put up a picture of what the cartoon looks like. I'm now just putting up a, a picture of a of a Q-tip going up someone's ass. Oh, that. <laughs> uh, anyway, looks like that fucking python with that alligator earlier. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're in the comedy section of iTunes and nowhere yes. else. <laughs> don't move us anywhere else. Just remember, you hands uh, against the stall wall, pull your pants down, here's the swab. <laughs> I believe those are the lyrics of our next song. Oh, they, if not, we're going to fucking make them then. That's what I have. Come into the Ravens flight, put your hands against the wall, <laughs> bend over. Don't put um, up a fight. Don't put up a fight. <laughs> It's the Raven's flight. <laughs> That's what we're calling it from <laughs> now on. Instead of a butt swap, it's the Raven's flight. <laughs> oh, that's what happens when they find a little extra chocolate in the old... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I told you that before. She was just like, do a better job wiping, asshole. Literally. Literally. Um, yeah. I wouldn't hey. call you that. She was actually ex- instructing you. <laughs> She's like, wipe this way. All right. Um, I swear... I feel so bad for the audience oh, tonight. <laughs> I really do. Like, they tuned in to hear our thoughts on a really good album, and we keep oh. sidetracking into my ass. My ass, Jesse. Yeah. My ass. What happened? I sidetracked right into Mark's ass. <laughs> Didn't mean to. This podcast <laughs> has gone directly into my ass. My ass, Jesse. My wife oh, was very excited boy. for me. She was like, oh, look, someone's going to play with your butt, because I'm not going to. Mm. And I'm like, well, somebody has to. <laughs> And the nurse, I think, pretty much went into a corner I, I and cried. Getting offers. <laughs> you keep getting offers to play with my butt. Are you pimping out my yeah, ass? Just, uh, just to play with mine. Oh, ew. Hey, hey. I mean, she's going to be listening. Hi, mm. Megan. Love you. <laughs> Love you, boo. If you were, a, if you were, a, if you were even half a man, you'd have just yelled "butt scratcher" and been done with this. <laughs> <laughs> what, when they put it in or what? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, then. So, Valkyria, right, Jess? What is ah, Ang- yeah. What does Angry Metal Guy think? Angry Metal Guy. I got him right here. Our good buddy, Angry Metal Guy. He, so far, okay. His, for his overall review, which is interesting, usually he throws down a number of you, but uh, rating is good with an exclamation mark. Okay, How many about so swabs? He, no, <laughs> he's not. He is not hip to that rating system just yet. Okay. Uh, after he listens to this podcast, I'm sure, you know, he's going to change things up. We're going to move uh, from stars to butt swabs. Yes, sir. While Berserker achieves its purpose of delivering gym-ready tunes to the beefcakes among us, <laughs> it, suffers, it suffers from two problems that are unfortunately additive. First, Berserker is long. And second, it's very densely produced, which... I don't know if I get that vibe. I mean, I can I'm maybe not, see where he's coming I, from. With like, it I, I feel like it's comment. very clean. Like, I don't, I'm not getting dense from this at all. Yeah, dense and clean, I would say, are two separate things. Maybe I do he would see say you're just a little dense then. <laughs> uh, it could be. <laughs> hey, oh. what's the walk? Uh... Clocking in at nearly an hour, Berserker is the band's longest record by an average of about 13 minutes. So there's Angry Metal Guy for you. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. There's uh, I, I, when it comes to the length of the, al- of the album, I can agree with him on that because I do feel like this is a little long in the tooth, and I get a little bored as we approach the end. Um, but we're halfway through it now. We're getting ready to hit track six, right, Mark? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't tell that you were just fucking agree with me or not. You know, couldn't <laughs> tell. Um, Anyway, it, yeah, it, we're halfway through it. I think every song on here so far has get, ha, had a lot of promise, and I've enjoyed every single tune. So let's see how the next half of this album goes. All right. This is our second single for the evening. Uh, Jesse and I did a Metal Hammer of Doom extra on it. This is Raven's Flight. Touch the waves When the 
Oh. All I can think about with this song is the video of the like, the two warriors on the bridge somehow taking out an entire army. <laughs> it's all yeah, about bottlenecks. Them. Yeah, I'm going to say that if an army runs down on two people on a bridge, those two people are getting at least, at the very least, knocked off the bridge. I've played Dynasty Warriors. I think you're wrong. <laughs> cool. Terrific. So last, last night, I listened to a podcast. Uh, it's called... Zero issues. It's a comic podcast, but trust me, they are uh, they're very similar to us, where it's more entertainment value and less fact. But either way, uh, they had a they had a photoshopped image of I think the next title of their uh, podcast, which is I think it was "Stop or Momoa Will Shoot," which was <laughs> <laughs> so. I immediately chimed in with, "Now we need to throw Momoa from the train." <laughs> <laughs> And uh, then we started pitching ideas, which were, you know, it was a running man. It was sort of like a running man movie where Momoa was trying to, you know, go through the trade and proceedingly to proceeding to, you know, kick people off for obviously throw people off the train uh, in order to survive. And then, of course, it, it devolved into not only that, but everybody is Momoa. So everybody's Momoa throwing Momoa off the train. There you go. I don't. Lo- I don't love that idea. I think replace <laughs> Jason Momoa. I think J- take Momoa uh, out of there and put Jason Statham in there, and I think you got a winner. All right, I like it. But make all the guys like the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Statham fighting through a train filled Momoa with rocks. That'd be fantastic. Okay. Uh, Hobbs and Shaw Express. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That movie looks so dumb. I'm not interested. My kids are so excited to see that movie. I feel yeah, like... And Rob Don't I, forget I, about that other of yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Robert Winfrey is a Mormon, and he doesn't drink or do any, you know, do any vices. He barely even curses, and I if ever. I, and, I, and, I, and, I wanna, and I want damn you Hollywood to drive him literally to drink. I want to break him. That does not surprise me. We were actually talking about that last night. The, uh, Lowell and I were sitting down talking about Damn You Hollywood, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Mark tortures Winfrey." I mean, you could—he was going to make him watch Barbie for fuck's sake. He was trying to make that man watch Barbie. So, Mark, you're—it's not like you're trying to hide your ambitions to break Robert Winfrey. It's Wobbit quite a Winfrey. Wobbit Winfrey. Wobbit Win- <laughs> Wobbit Winfrey. Um, Jesse, you ever heard of Booba? Yeah, we talked about this. We, oh, that's right. We talked about this on Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, me and Alexis actually watched an episode of Booba. Oh, that would have been a fun commentary. Did you guys do a commentary on it? We we did. It's 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 on the network. No, I'm yeah. gonna have to find that and listen. Yeah, right. Is before... it part of an episode already, or is it separate? No, it's separate. We did, we recorded it right before we did Damn You Hollywood for Spider Man Far From Home. Why am I missing this? I okay. enjoyed that movie. Booba? Who was the team? Oh, oh far oh, from right. home. Yeah, it was all right. All right, this next one is not a Sabaton <laughs> song. I just played the Millennials. <laughs> this next one is not a Sabaton song, but it is called Iron Hang. Side. <laughs>
All right, that was Ironside, another Doomy March song. What'd you think of that one, Cooper? Uh, I thought it was about as good as the Ironside re- remake that they tried to do a few years ago. <laughs> remember, remember the detective in the wheelchair, Ironside. <laughs> We're a silly podcast. So. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I really I enjoyed the song. I was just the entire time I'm like, isn't that the fucking TV show with the cop in a wheelchair? I don't know what you're talking about. I have no yeah, I have no clue. All I can think about is like the American the Dad show. bit Not where All I can think about is the American Dad bit where Roger and um, Steve play leg man and the wheels. But like you know, you know, there's a, there are two detectives and one of them's in a wheelchair. Get it, wheels. Yeah. All uh, right. Ironside first began acting in movies in the late 1970s. He received plenty of recognition with his frightening oh, turn Michael as deadly. <laughs> I'm like, where is he going with this? <laughs> Wait, I didn't get the Top Gun yet. Damn it. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that's gracious. all I can think of is fucking Michael Ironside. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, what would you think of the song? It's okay. It's all right. Here's where the downturn happens for me on this album. I'm getting bored. Uh, let's talk about Michael Ironside and all his fucking movies. Jesus, cow. This dude has how many fucking movies? Let's not and say I, we did. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna just kill the gimmick right there. Uh, the butcher. He was Wolverine in the X Men. Uh, apparently, he was. Yeah. Criminal Minds. Wait. What was it? When was he Wolverine? He, uh, he wasn't Wolverine in the X Men. It was Wolverine and the X Men. The I think it was the animated TV series. Oh, so yeah. are, uh, Colonel Moss uh, as the voice of Colonel Moss. He should be Moss Man in the He Man movie coming up. Oh, oh, bring Randy it, Moss. Randy Moss. <laughs> Minnesota Vikings. Uh, let's, let's see if we can do a few more Moss. Hey, jokes. remember remember when we talked about Yom's Viking and we talked nothing about the album. <laughs> Well, well, sirs, <laughs> history repeats itself. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do two more of these, and then I think we're going to medley the last three. How's that sound? I'm down. All right, this next I, one. I, I can't wait to rewrite a Shield Wall about cheese. About cheese. <laughs> cheese, there, cheese wheel. There's a port wine cheese ball and some crackers. Time for snack. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Weird Al of Heavy Metal. Robert Cooper. Robert Cooper. Robert Cooper right here in our show. Right, All right here, right here. All right, this next one is called The Berserker at Stamford Bridge. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
berserker at Stamford Bridge sounds like the name of the next school shooting. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I was thinking oh. the exact same thing. You know, I was I was questioning whether or not I should do that joke, but I got two perfect reactions: awful, and I was thinking the same thing. Oh. <laughs> oh. Jesse, you feel like you need to take? You feeling like you need to take a shower now? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Please. Oh, I like it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it really, like, brings it down, because I thought this is, like, one of the top three songs off this album. I really do it's a good like one. the song. I like yeah. the story. This is the one where I was listening and was able to catch the story, understand the story, and I think the story that was being told was great. Well, fucking so. hit it, Aesop. Oh, well, I mean, we got a dude on the bridge that you were just... Remember how you were, like, giving shit to the people in the video? There were two people in the video... <laughs> <laughs> that were holding off an army. I think that's where the inspiration of this came from, uh, or for that came from, I should say, because this is all about one guy on a bridge, and the English are trying to cross this bridge. By the end of the song, this berserker, this huge dude with this axe, has killed 40 people, and the only way that they could kill him is by putting a boat below, and I assume with uh, archers, and shoot him from the river. And so then they finally felt him. So you remember in Indiana Jones where the uh, like the Arab swordsman is swinging his sword around and he's threatening Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones just, you know, kind of nonchalantly, kind of aggravatedly pulls a gun and just shoots him? Yep. So that's the whole problem here. <laughs> Projectile weapons win over hand-to-hand combat every time. That's good point i will not i will not disagree i will there, not disagree there's a guy standing on a bridge he will not move back up 50 feet and fucking shoot him start shooting him yes. with your arrows you got bows and arrows ladies and gentlemen use them use them and you know i had no idea until we did that commentary me and chris did that commentary on temple of doom that temple of doom came before raiders and so that whole sequence of the gun shooting the swordsman Mm-hmm. And in, in the second one is actually the first instance he tries to do that. Oh, really? Because it comes off like it's a yeah, reference like to learned. the first one. Yep, but then nope. but, but he forgot his gun. Oh, that's the joke. See? You see, changes, they flipped it around. So yeah, it, it, it changes it when you think that when you know that that's the first time they did it. Yeah, and he learned. So by the next time, he's he's more confident. So I think it comes off better like as, oh, he forgot his gun this time. I agree 100%. That's and again, what do you think, Coop? I thought it was a good song. Uh, it was solid, but I don't know. I feel like this album kind of lacks in momentum at some parts. Like, I do enjoy it because I love Amon and Marth, and I uh, I don't know. I want to just stand shirtless with people firing at me. <laughs> this album is almost as gay as an uh, album cover of this band called The Throwdown, which the dude was just legit shirtless. Like, it was a picture of a guy. Dude's like fucking straight ripped beefcake, but covered in really shitty fake arrows. I wish they could have gotten away with his dick hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> what with the arrow just sticking out of the tip? <laughs> oh. I don't think he needs to be shot in the dick with an arrow. Well, but... I can tell you the face that he's making on the album <laughs> would definitely fit if he got an arrow to the cock. I think Amon a Moth Berserker, the album cover, is just missing an upshot of, of dick and balls. I mean, we could have just had the tip. I mean, somebody could print this off and easily draw the tip of one hanging out there. Oh, underneath. oh, hey, Mon, I can see your doodle. <laughs> Arr, you can mark this. You can mark that square off your bingo card. We made a dick joke tonight. Penis joke. Uh, isn't it awfully nice to have a penis? All right, uh, let's move this on. This next one is called. What's it called? What's it all about? What's it's, it all about? It's called When Once Again We Can Set Our Sails.
So, you know, upon listening to this closely, believe it or not, audience, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) I'm at, you know, giving this a real listen, even though we're bullshitting a lot. You know, I'm really like tuning in. I feel like they started off high with Fafner's gold. You know, the next one was was, was good, and then it's just been kind of you know. I feel like right after Mjolnir Hammer of Thor, it kind of takes this whole album just kind of takes a dive, and it hasn't quite recovered yet for me. Hmm. Like it's not I mean, bad. I, I'm not. I'm not I, it's. I think like like Fafner's gold is, is really strong, and really what I want to hear from Amon and Martha. Nothing has been as strong as that. We just listened to a song, okay? If you look at the lyrics, all that song was about is wanting to go sail on a ship. So it's about going on a cruise? The love boat. I don't know about that, but, (laughs) you know, I I got to thinking, does Amon Amarth sometimes wonder if, like, fuck, we've painted ourselves into a corner? (laughs) <laughs> like, We've run out do of we have to, to write do about another it? fucking? Do we have to do another Viking song? Fuck me! Like I want to talk about the Pride Festival, something <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> but no, what if this... because they're a fucking Viking? What if this band. next song was about gay days at Disney? I no, it fucking doesn't... love it. Holy shit! <laughs> like why are you gay? <laughs> you are gay. <laughs> <laughs> We don't understand why Disney has gay days. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. You're fantastic. Uh, I mean, I just... Queer and doesn't work. <laughs> you, you guys, we've run out of things to talk about, and it's like they just decided, okay, well, you know, Vikings really do like to sail, but these guys, this, this is a song about Vikings who really want to sail. They're not sailing. Oh, they're they really hard. want to. They really want to. And they're sitting at home dreaming about the summertime and so they can go sailing again they're like olaf from frozen sure that yeah <laughs> <laughs> this song is about a snowman <laughs> all right dreams of just summer. <laughs> all right coop any last words on this one if not we're gonna medley these last three and get out of here i mean yeah i still think shield walls the high point but yeah between that and fafner's gold I just kind of there, you know. Yeah, like I said, it's not a badly put together album, but um, it's kind of I, I'm upon listening to it again with, a, with you know really scrutinizing the album, I'm getting a more midland than I am like oh loving it. So it's not a Yom's Viking for me. It is no, not. it is not a Twilight of the Thunder Gods. That's for certain. Oh, clearly not. Clearly not. Clearly not. Surely not. All clearly right. Not. Don't call it surely. <laughs> All right, the next ones are called Skull and Hottie, Wings of Eagles, and Into the Dark. Until you call on the dark. Until you call on the dark. Oh, 
that I say oh this isn't you know this isn't great it kind of falls off after Fafner's Gold and then like the last three songs kick amazing ass <laughs> Jesus Christ what am uh, I talking well, about over that, here that happens that happens it does finish off strong I will it does give it, it that. finishes off like way strong yeah super yeah. strong so strong so very strong so very strong Coop who strong Strong. Too just, just strong. Oh, it's a good finish. It's a good finish. Uh, this album is one of those, like, I feel like it's an Amon and Marth album. Does that make sense? It's, uh... It, it's one of those that has some really strong songs. Not every song's like an out, out of this park banger, but at the same time, like, not every song has to be, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, I feel like this is a... Good aim on Martha. I feel like this, this has been the kind of a common thing throughout this year, is that we've we've run across a couple of albums that I I think would have been better served with some editing, like maybe cut a song or two from this one. Obviously, leave the last three, but um, <laughs> but some some of the other ones in the middle, maybe we don't need the songs about you know how isn't it awfully nice to go sailing. <laughs> Just say. Uh, yeah. uh, we need to change that title. How about when once again we can set our sails? That's perfect. <laughs> Put it on the album. <laughs> so I, I'm just saying, like, maybe cut a couple of songs from this. Give it, you know, make make it nice and tight. And I think you got a, I think you got more of a winner here. But yeah, know. I would agree. I would agree. I think yeah, that criticism about it being a little bit lengthier. Uh, 
coming from you, coming from Angry Metal Guy, I think that does hold a lot of weight because really the weight. It, Take the load off, Fanny. Took the load off of me. You don't want to hold too much weight, though. It, it's not going to have a fun time at the doctor's. No, no. As a matter of fact, you know, you might have issues. I don't know, wiping your ass or something. <laughs> I don't know how that all works. Take but when the butt swap, <laughs> when the butt swap occurs, you're you're gonna you're gonna find out. God, we are consistent. Uh, hey, we had to get one more ass joke in there before the night One ends. more. Yep. We still have plugs to do. <laughs> plugs. Speaking of plugs, my butt. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're done here. I'm going to give this album a B. What do you think? B. Just, what do you think, Justin? Mark, Mark being overly. I mean, this is, this is I would have expected at least an A-. minus. I, mean, I was I was starting to go A minus, and then I was like, no, I don't. Like I said, I think I think this album needs uh, needs to go back into the studio, and some cutting needs to happen before we get through the A minus part. I think I, as, like I think with the with the length of time this album takes, and the fact that you know it, it's bookended by some really great stuff, but in the middle it's kind of middling. You know, we need to we need to give it a where break. the middle should be is right in the middling. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> where the middle should be take I like, the load I like, off Fanny take a load off of me I like what you're saying Mark Radlitz I can't agree with you boys more that it's it's solid it just needs a little pinch a little nip a little tuck and then we might have something that could definitely uh, be worthy of of the follow up to Yom's Viking so uh, I, I enjoyed myself listening to it Am I going to revisit it? There are definitely a few songs on here I will love to come back to later this year. As for the album as a whole, probably not. Just It just isn't something that I'm going to sit through the whole time unless it's, again, background noise, something along those lines. So I had a good time listening to it. Uh, it's probably, oh, shit. As for the second half of the year, it's probably, uh, which reminds me, Mark, we got to get our uh, top whatever we have for the first half figured out at some point. I was going to do that two podcasts ago. But this would be up there, I think, for me. This will probably be, for the second half of the year, this will be in the top, I would imagine, by the end of the year. You picked the long, wrong time to leave me, Lucille. You bitch, you whore. I don't remember that part. Um, <laughs> Coop, final thoughts. I really want to do my ending review in the beat of Shield Wall, but I just don't know if I have it in me. Mm. <laughs> Give it a try. In in the voice of Bane? <laughs> Hold on. I think I, I think I might be able to whip him out real quick. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, excuse me while he whips this out. I would say that this album does not do a bad job, Batman. It has some bangers. It even has a few songs that I would consider good. It might be a berserker, but I don't want it to die. <laughs> I would give it a solid three and a half out of ten, Batman. Three and a half out of what? Five. Did that, I, meant, I said ten. <laughs> I meant five. <laughs> I was going to say it. A seven. Okay, got it. Thanks, Bane. Ba- Thanks, Bane, for cover. clarifying. Oof, thank goodness. All right. He was born in a pit. He wasn't. He didn't. He wasn't taught how to count. Born in it, made it in it. <laughs> I was taught to listen to a man of math till I was a man. <laughs> All right. So the next. So we finish up July with the Texas Hippie Coalition, Sabaton the Great War. And L7 Scatter the Rats. Pat Mullen was nonplussed about us doing an L7 album, and I want I wanted people to remember the wargasm. Remember the wargasm, everybody. And he said, Remember that time L7 threw a bloody tampon into the audience? And I was like, Well, you know. Pat Mullen not excited about us talking about a. It's a completely female band, correct? Yeah. Well, shocking. From the Riot Girl era. Um, then on There's August. A, August okay. Holocaust. Uh, cover of Orgasm? Probably. Um, on August 7th, we've got Volbeat. 
Uh, higher, Where, farther, uh, faster, further. No. Rewind, replay, rebound. Your battleship chains. Um, on August 14th, we've got Slipknot. We are I, not your kind, which will actually be joined by newcomer to the Rattledge and Broadcasting uh, baseball lineup, Mr. Uh, TMC, who does our wrestl- does some of our wrestling review. Check that out. We got uh, Thy Aught is Murder. Moida. It's Moida, Jesse. <laughs> um, the album is called Human Target. And then we've got, and then we uh, end the month of August with Rage of Light Imploder. Candyman. We should do a whole Target, a whole Target themed, like, week. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll review Moving Target, and then was that the name of it, Moving Target? Mm-hmm. And then we'll also do a commentary for Hard Target, and then maybe we'll we do, we could a do it com- in defense of the TV show. Uh, what was it? Um, I was it the Moving Target. No, it was, it was a Fox show. It was really shitty. Hold on. You're watching Fox. Hard Target was the movie with Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in September, we take we're taking the first week of September off. Uh, there'll be no Metal Hammer of Doom that week because, assuming I don't got the cancer anymore and I'm up to it, I'm going to Knot Fest with uh, Slipknot and Volbeat. As a matter of fact. We come back on September 11th. We'll be we're reviewing the new Kill Switch Engage Atonement. And then we got Ooh, the new Tarja uh, in the raw. She Tarja likes it raw. Um, <laughs> oh. And then on uh, September 25th, we've got Corn the Nothing, which I believe we will also have TMC on for. And then are we gonna run TMC? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then on October 2nd, oh, get your hell yeah, welcome home, baby. Um, turns out one of the doctors that's oh, that's reviewing all my CAR-T stuff, big into Pantera. Found that out. That was fun. While I was while I was getting, while the nurse was administering the CAR-T, we were talking Pantera. And I honestly you don't... Re- the was I, warm? I honestly don't remember if Vinnie Paul is dead. I know Diamond, Dimebag Daryl is dead. Yes, Vinnie Paul is dead, you... Silly goose. That's he what died I, of a heart attack. That's what I thought. I thought both the, both the brothers had died finally. You, you uh, know, it was, and when I saw that he died, I looked at Nick. I just went, well, Nick, heart attack. He doesn't make you say that. I'm like, the guy's always been overweight. He drank like a fucking say. He drank like it was water. So pretty <laughs> sure it was a heart attack. Um, Jesse, just, just put on the calendar. Are you ready? What a week this is going to be. Uh, we've got Steel Panther. Heavy Uh-oh. Metal Rules. Yeah. On oh, October ninth. Oh shit! I had to oh, rework man. my entire October calendar to accommodate this because I wasn't. She's on the rack. She's on the rack. Um, Oct- October sixteenth, we've got Baby Metal Metal Galaxy. Prepare to be offended. Prepare to be offended. Isn't only two of them. I think it's only two of them left. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, that's that. That's plenty of ammunition. <laughs> yeah, that's that's quite enough. Are we offended? Uh, Jesse and I offended a bunch of people because I made fun of uh, the, the, their accent. Oh, that! Oh, yeah. Man, the, you should have should have had me the uh, the official representative of the Weeaboo Coalition. Of the Weebles Coalition, Weeab- the Weeaboo. Weeaboo. Remember, we had this discussion about what a Weeaboo Weeblos? was. Weeblos. On... Those are right before Boy uh, Scouts, right? Oh my god! I'm funny. Hey, Jesse. So we we talked. When we did Oakley Doki, uh, Oakley Doki, fuck me, <laughs> Oakley Dokley, Coop, we had to educate Mark on what a weeaboo was. Now, now, granted, I was the one that asked the question what it was, but Mark immediately ca- chimed in with, "Is that a Pokemon?" <laughs> <laughs> it's my new gimmick, <laughs> Jesse. I'm trying to tell you, I got a present for you. I got, so- I got something for you. Ass. Oh, is it a swab? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> October twenty third, Lacuna Coil, Black Anima. Oh, I. I saw that. I saw that get added to the calendar, and I was so excited. Yeah. Oh, I got I'm you, baby. Of, I I'm looking at a picture I, right now. I take care of my Jesse. Bend over. Let me give you a butt swab. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Only butt swab professionals, please. <laughs> I don't consider you professional. Nobody does. Um, <laughs> Gavin felt his touch. And then <laughs> our Halloween, like our, our this year's Halloween <laughs> treat. Our covers album. It came out way earlier this year, but we're going to get to it October 30th, the night before Halloween proper. 
Arch enemy covered in blood, like a tampon. Yeah. <laughs> you guys get it? So <laughs> and then uh, November sixth, we've got the new Blind Guardian, um, Legacy of the Dark Lands, and that's all that's on the calendar so far. Our body is ready. Christina Scabia. Oh my goodness. Mm. Stop looking. Just See, turn the good images off right now. See what I do for you, Jesse. Uh, Cannot wait to talk about her again. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Are you done with the plug so Coop can go? <laughs> I can go. I'm not the one that's gonna get. I'm not the one that's gonna get my assholes. They're gonna yeah. walk up and say credit card or chip, and he's just like, I guess chip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now squeeze. Uh, now slide, uh, baby, slide. Oh, Jonas yeah. came up. Oh. Jonas came over to me and he was like, I want to play video games. I'm like, no, you're done playing video games today. And then the TV was on, so I kept looking at the TV while I was trying to direct him. And I'm like, you're done looking at screens for the day. You're a fucking addict. He was like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm bored. And I'm like, so I taught him the Macarena. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I saw a a good meme that had a guy looking at a computer that says, must get must uh, leave bad screen to look at good screen. <laughs> I was like, yeah, pretty much. All right, it's uh, nine minutes. It, it's nine minutes until they rush me with butt swabs. So, uh, Robert Cooper, do the same do your useless, do the same useless plug that you always do. Uh, actually, I was not going to go with the useless one. Uh, so it's the summer, the first week of the summer season of anime, kids. And the reason why I plug it now, because on Amazon Prime, they have made an anime adaptation of Jesse and I's favorite manga, Vinland Saga. Oh! And it's really pretty. Nice. It looks really good. So, like, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm like a fire. I am stoked. So, yeah, go, uh, go watch that Amazon Prime, because it's a bitch to find on there unless you search for it. Just they fucking suck. Not optimized at all. Uh, and then there's this podcast. I'm, I'm also uh, I'm on it. Go go to a hardware store and buy mulch. Oh, no, not nice. mine. I just had to cycle 500 bags out. Ooh, yeah, that was some lifting. That's a right. thousand dollars. Take me home, Jesse Baby Doll. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, go give the Rattlelich in Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. All sorts of podcast subjects, such as wrestling, TV movies, comics, metal, and more. So feel free to check that out. You got a podcast player? Well, you don't have the podcast player unless you're in the know and you have PodCoin. That's right. You're going to get paid to listen to podcasts with PodCoin. That's right. Do you like gift cards? We all like gift cards. Do you like gift cards to Amazon and Starbucks? Well, you get paid to listen to podcasts and you can get some gift cards. There you go. I've you can earned... Find this- I've already earned enough pod coins to get myself a three dollar gift card to Starbucks. Do you know that? Oh wow! That is half a drink right there. I'm I was impressed. gonna say, I get you a little sample. I might give uh, get myself a cake pop. Oh wow! Well, yeah. Hey, listen to Mark Radlich. He's he's definitely using the app, and he is benefiting from it. So why don't you, if you listen to podcasts as much as I do, as much as Mark does, there's no sense in not getting paid to listen to them. So there you go. Check out PodCoin. And uh, we're on all sorts of everything else. Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. Uh, so you are you could easily, maybe you want to sample us there. And then you're like, oh, these guys ain't so bad. I wouldn't mind getting paid listening to them. There you go. Go to PodCoin. Check you it might, out. You might be saying yourself, the only way I'll listen to these guys is if they pay me. Well, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, other than that, I think we're ready to get the hell out of here. Mark Radlich, it's time to get that ass swabbed, baby. All right, it's butt swab time, baby. Butt swab 89. Butt swab Butt <laughs> Be well, be safe, and behave. Progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. 
I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, it's pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. And now, an ad from Dad. <clears throat> all right, save money on car insurance when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Can I take these off? All right. What is this? This looks good. Wow. That's well made. Where did you get this? I'm talking to you with the hair. Yeah, where did you get this? It's good stuff. That's solid. That's not veneer. That's solid stuff. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discounts not available in all states or situations.